celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Appreciate him. Please, you can be seated. We are going to look at the subject of access this Sunday. The subject of getting in there. Raise your right hand and say, where others get to, I will get there. Say it again, I'm not a candidate to be outside. I belong inside. Where others get, I will get. Now that's like a faith confession. Say the things I didn't access last year. I will access them this year. The things I didn't touch last year, I will touch them this year. Because I'm ready to be obedient to the law of access. Now, access, ladies and gentlemen, has laws. There are laws that govern access. There are laws that make it possible for us to be in there. In the second service, we look at how Jesus has already made it possible for you and I to be a candidate of access. One of the greatest gifts that we have to thank God for is the gift of Jesus. Somebody said the gift of Jesus. What Jesus has done. And we ought to thank God, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus does not come from anybody's village. If Jesus came from some Kenyan village, you and I would suffer. The way some of you are treated in your place of work, treated in your place of assignment, the way you are viewed, the way you are looked at. Supposing Jesus came from someone's village, many of us would not have access. But we bless the Lord that Jesus is not coming from anybody's village. So we look at that in the second service, how he granted us access, how he opened the door for us, how he made it possible for us to enjoy what was not possible for us before. Your sound is terrible this morning, but I'll manage how he made it possible. The possibilities that were made by Jesus. We look at that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, apart from that, after Jesus has already paid the price for us, when you look keenly, you realize that not every Christian is enjoying what Jesus died for. Not every Christian is happy. Not every Christian is enjoying the things that Jesus died for. Why? Because there are laws that govern certain levels of access in the kingdom of God. That you are a child of God does not automatically qualify you for some levels and some things in the kingdom. And therefore, as we look at this, I pray that as you rise in your obedience to God, as you rise in your love for God, as you rise in your commitment to God, that you will get to that place where you will also enjoy the access that others are enjoying. Can I hear an amen? Raise your hands and say, by my obedience to these principles, I will enjoy the access others are enjoying. Say it again, those that God has blessed, they don't have three heads. They are just like me. Look for two people and tell them the people God has blessed look just like you. Good. So we are talking about how to get into some things that some Christians are enjoying. 
It's still sad that some Christians are enjoying what some Christians are not enjoying because of the laws of access. And this morning, I want to look at access by the blessing. Access by the blessing of God. One of the things God has given us to be able to grant us access is the blessing of God. When God created man, after he created man, he knew there are things man will not be able to enjoy except he blesses man. So the blessing is a serious gate pass into certain things in life. Now does it mean you are not blessed? Ephesians 1.3, let's begin with that. Blessed be the Father and the God of our Lord Jesus Christ who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So in a way, when you give your life to Jesus, the blessing has been made available. You're already blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so we've already been blessed with every spiritual blessing. But it's one thing to be blessed with every spiritual blessing and it's another thing to experience it. It's another thing for it to become a reality in your life. For it to manifest in your life. For it to become something you can touch. For it to become something you can use. For it to become something that is real in your life. Tell your neighbor, I'm tired of stories, I want reality. I'm tired of I'm blessed by faith. I want to be blessed by faith and I want to touch what faith has given unto me. Can I hear an amen? amen? So when I share this, I talk about how we can move away from stories into reality. John said this, the things which we have heard, the things uh, which we have touched, the things which we have handled, we declare them unto you and it makes us know that the things which he has touched, the things which he has handled, are nothing but the word of God. So the word of God can get to a place where you touch it, where you handle it, where you experience the reality of it. And when we talk about access, I'm talking about this year, getting to a place where you touch the things that you are believing God for. Can I hear an amen? amen. Say it again, I'm tired of stories, I want reality. Spiritual things ought to become daily realities in our lives so that you don't just quote Psalm 23 you touch Psalm 23 you experience Psalm 23 you leave Psalm 23 you breathe Psalm 23 you travel to the village and they can see Psalm 23 in your life somebody shout I take that so we are already blessed with every spiritual blessing, let's go there. The things we have heard, the things we have uh, 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 touched, the things we have handled, declare us unto you, John speaking. Can you put it there very quickly? Now, John says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. But we went beyond hearing and we have seen. Look at it. Put your eyes on the screen and look at it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Somebody shout, hearing. And what you hear, you ought to see. The word of God is not just for hearing. The word of God is for seeing. What happened when the queen of Sheba came to see Solomon? When she had seen the wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom ought to be seen. The word of God is not just for hearing. The word of God is for seeing. And when people begin to see the word of God in your life, it preaches what your message cannot preach. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands, you will see, you will look upon, and you will carry with your hands. I don't like your amen this morning. If you are looking for a church where you are encouraged and you remain the way you are, you are in the wrong church. In this particular one, you will not only hear, you will not only see, you will look upon and you will handle it. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Night of fire is this Friday, the oil of marriage. This year, some of you will handle marriage, will enter marriage, will enjoy marriage, will walk with your husband, 
mutamachisha vitenge this year it is called handling the word of god so to all these lx570 is ours by faith oh they already ours by faith even if we don't see them they are not there in heaven so access this is what access means you don't just hear you don't just you know touch See, look at this. That which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. So the word of life is heard. The word of life is seen, and the word of life is handled. Hallelujah. Tell three people you'll see it in my life. Tell another three people you'll see it in my life. Tell another three people you'll see it in my life. Tell somebody else you'll see it in my life. Tell someone you'll see prosperity in my life. Tell somebody you'll see healing in my life. Hallelujah. Hata ukasirike. Hata sita sema amen ni mikasirika. Hallelujah. Why did you come all the way? Amen is for free. So, ladies and gentlemen, we don't only hear, we get to a place where we handle. So when we talk about access, the question is this, how can I handle it? I have heard it. How do I handle it? I've seen it with other people. How do I see it? Batimaeus was shouting and rioting because Batimaeus was tired, was tired of hearing that Jesus is passing by. Batimaeus wanted to see. Sitaki muniambie, nataka nijione mwenyewe. Sitaki muniambie tu ya kwamba Yesu alipita. Hata mimi nataka nione kwa maisha yangu. Now Simeon said, now your servant can rest in peace because my eyes have seen salvation. Halibiba Yesu kwa mikono yake akaona na macho. Wacha ni sarakazi na vituko zako. Kukomba siku moja mtaona. Iyo ni siku gani iyo. Siku moja mtaona. I wish we could sing that song by Lord Mbongo. Hallelujah. Batimaya liya nataka, nataka kuona. Wapendo wakabla niende mbinguni kuna vitu nataka kuona. I want to see. Hallelujah. Let me tell you there are things if your children don't see they will not serve God. We are dealing with the generation that is results oriented. They can see results. You know, tell them that one day Jesus will come on a horse, my son, and will enjoy in heaven. And the club is offering a better alternative. They would rather go to the club where there are results than your Jesus that is stagnant. They want to see. I speak over you, it will be seen upon your life. I said it will be seen upon your life. The word of God will be seen in your life. The promises of God will manifest in your life. The grace of God will be seen in your life. The tangibility of God's word will be experienced in your life. Now give me this in the book of Acts. And when they had come and they had seen the grace of God. They didn't say oh we full grace. They saw the grace of God. They came and they saw the grace of God. They saw the grace of God. Nema ya baba itaonekana kwa maisha yako. Ninashuku ni, ni sana emeni ya kwa siku ya leo. Nisimesema neema ya baba itaonekana kwa maisha yako. The reason some of us will be criticized is because we are ready to walk in the tangibility of the word of God. I will not only believe it, you will see it in my life. I tell your neighbor, it will be seen in your life and it will be seen in my life and men will see God in our lives and when they had come down there, look at this. And when they came and had seen the grace of God, they were glad. You know what encourages people when they see grace? They were glad and encouraged them that with one purpose, that, that, that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. When you see grace, you continue with God. When you don't see grace, you start all kinds of lamentation. I go to church on Sunday. But when you see, you continue with God. You cannot continue. You get discouraged along the way. God grants tokens to his children because God does not want them to get discouraged. Some of you, you'll carry one beautiful baby this year as a token of encouragement. Somebody shout hallelujah. Pastor, I've dropped eight. I need money. Yes, you will carry money to go along with your eight children. 
Shout hallelujah. So look at this. So when he came and they had seen the grace of God, they were glad and encouraged them all that with one purpose of heart, they should continue with God. Now put it there, test and see. When you taste God, the next thing you don't give stories, you see it. Shida niyakuamba tutake kuwanja mungu. Tumataka kuwanja dini. There is a place as you go deep in God. There is a place you get when you begin to taste God. You begin to taste the spirit of God. You begin to taste the power of God. You begin to taste the anointing of God. And when you taste God, eventually, you will see the goodness of God. The goodness of God is not only believed, the goodness of God is seen. And it begins with, oh! Which means when you taste it, you will shout. Somebody shout, oh! Shout again, oh! Yes. Shout again, oh! I hate people that come to church and act dignified. You want to act dignified, stay in your house. Shout again, oh! This is a, a place of faith. I'm going to watch Facebook Live o'clock kwa Ketanda. But when you come to the house of God, you must dance like David danced. You must get crazy and give God noise in the house of God. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Shout again, oh! Ah. Test and see. When you test, the next thing you see, God is good. Sababu gani unalalamika ni kwa sababu jawai yonja? Sababu gani unatutisha? Hata hii saande sioni nikienda, nimekua nikienda ni kwa sababu jawai yonja. Umeonja dini lakini ujaonja mungu wewe. Naitaji kuonja mungu. Ukionja baba. Ukionja roo mtakatifu. Ukionja upako wa roo mtakatifu. Ukionja nguvu za maombi. Ukionja nguvu za kufunga. Ukionja nguvu ya kutolea mungu sadaka. When you test God, the next thing is that you have to see. Raise your hands and shout, this is my year. I will see it. Itaona na macho. Test and see that the Lord is good. And what follows? And blessed is the man that trusts God. You know why you are not blessed? You trust your boss. Trust your brother in America. Trust your sister in Chicago. You are brother in wherever. But when a man trusts God, the blessing begins. Why? He tasted and saw that the Lord is good. So when we talk about the laws of access, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about how do we get to the place of tasting. And one of the key instruments of getting to the place of tasting is the instrument of the blessing. The blessing of God, nothing grants access like the blessing of God. And ladies and gentlemen, does it mean the blessing has just been bestowed on us? Yes, it has been bestowed on us, but there are also those blessings that we have to live a life of obedience for us to see them manifest in our lives. Therefore you have a responsibility in the year 2022 to live a life of obedience so that dimensions of the blessing of God that ought to bring advancement in your life can rest upon your life. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? So the blessing of God is one of the key tools of access. There are things you cannot access except you are blessed. Genesis 28. Let me begin from there. The blessing of God is a tool of access. So you want to go to some levels. And remember, this is not that you are not blessed. Jacob was blessed several times. His father blessed him. He stole the blessing of his brother. But there was something that was supposed to now happen to him. And he needed yet another level of blessing. Genesis 28. Are you there? Now let's look at it. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. Somebody shout the blessing. And charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife. Now this was a blessing to access marriage. So marriage does not just happen. People are blessed to get married. I had one very tough-headed sister of mine. That would answer my mother anyhow. And very tough, very tough-headed. I lived with her. Tried caning her. So, I was blessed. So, then every time she would speak and my mother is talking, they would answer back and forth. And before long, she got a baby out of wedlock. And she had me teaching one day. If your mother does not bless you, if you are the one that answers your mother, answers your parents... 
you will grow old in your father's house. And that one hit her. Then she looked at how I treat my mother and how I treat parents. Looked at the things I do for parents. And then something hit her. She went and bought my mother a duvet, bed sheets, and something for the bed. And came and my mother said, Mama, I, want, I have something for you. Mama said, you, how? She said, Mama, don't worry, just come here. My mother said, something has happened. She's now born again. And she presented my mother the duvet, very nice duvet, and the bed sheets. You know what my mother said? May you meet a good man to marry you, my daughter. Nahaikuka. She's married. I think with two, no, two kids now. No, three, it should be three. No, two children now. Why? Because she needed that door to open. There are those that open doors on people. And one of the things that open some doors, so the blessing is a door. The blessing is a gate. The blessing is a doorway. The blessing is a gateway. The blessing is a gate pass. The blessing is a passport. There are places you never go without the blessing of some people. So he called him and blessed him and said, for where you are going, ladies and gentlemen, a woman needs to meet a wife. You need a blessing. In this generation, if you are going to meet a wife, you need a blessing. Friday night, I'm going to release something on single people here, me and mama. I don't like your amen. I don't like your amen. So then, this tells us that the blessing is a gateway. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. You know what that blessing was saying? If you touch a Canaanite woman, you land in a curse. That blessing placed a barrier on Canaanite women. They could not see Jacob. If Jacob tried, it would not work. Why? Because the dad placed something negative on the Canaanite women. That's the same way poverty can be cast in a man's life. And success can be licensed in a man's life. When a man is blessed, he's given a divine license. The blessing does not only guarantee a divine license, the blessing also puts a barrier on things that should not happen to you. So the blessing becomes a protection. The blessing becomes a wall and becomes a fence. So if Jacob would ever get into a relationship with a Canaanite woman, something will just go wrong. It can't work. Why? Because the father blessed him against it. That's why when the blessing is spoken, the blessing will sponsor some good things and the blessing will also be against certain things. So a blessed man can go this path but not this path. He tries this path, it can't work. Why? Because the blessing has rejected that path. But the blessing has chosen this path. So ladies and gentlemen, the blessing is a gate. The blessing is a door. The blessing is a line sense. The blessing is a catalyst. The blessing is an enzyme. So he blessed him and said, you shall not. The blessing have some knots in it. You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. You are blessed to go get a wife elsewhere. Somebody shout the blessing. Shout again the blessing of God. So ladies and gentlemen, the blessing is access. So on this access Sunday, as we get to the second service, I pray that you will access something. Can I hear an amen? amen. Say the blessing of God. The best beams are terrible. Say the blessing of God. Come upon my life. So ladies and gentlemen, there is that blessing that has come to you because you are born again. And then now, there are those blessings that we have to do certain things to be able to walk in them. So the blessing of God is a serious, serious tool of access. Genesis 39. Genesis 39 from verse number 5. Genesis 39 from around verse number 5. We read this, I think, a Sunday or two Sundays ago. Genesis 39 from verse number 5. But we can pick it from verse number 4. Shout again, the blessing is an access tool. Shout again, by the blessing of God, 
there are things I'm having access into. Say it again, by the blessing of God, there are doors that are opening in my life. Say it again, by the blessing of God, there are gates that are opening in my life. Say it again, by the blessing of God, there are opportunities that are opening in my life. So there are places you cannot go without the blessing of God. There are things you can't access. The blessing is a tool of access. There's a blessing you access and some things begin to happen. There's a blessing you lack and some things will never happen. Now look at this. Now the Lord was with Joseph. Now I already preached about that. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Look at verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him an overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority. Look at verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed. Somebody shout the Lord blessed. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian for Joseph's sake and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he did and all that he had in the house and in the field. So what made the difference? The blessing. So what did the blessing do in the life of Joseph? Is that the blessing granted him access to a peculiar position. You come to a place, a country that belongs to other people, a country where they are natives, a country where they began to work in a place ahead of you, a country where they feel they have more rights than you, a people that feel they belong more than you, if you are going to rise and lead such kind of people, something has to open a window for you. Something has to open a door for you. Something has to give you access. Something has to yank open in the spirit realm. You must carry something they don't carry. You need something to have your doors open in a place like that. So Joseph came. He found some people there working. He found some people there serving. He found some people there in their own country. But within no time, he was made a leader over them all. And we are told when he was made a leader, that thing that was on his life came on the life of Potiphar, his house, everything in the house, and everything Mashaban. What was it? The blessing of God. The blessing of God. Look at Ezekiel 44 verse 30. The blessing of God. Somebody say the blessing of God. Sometimes I hear people saying, you know, Mimi, stack your injilia, barikiwa, barikiwa, nataka injilia msalaba. That's why I've combined both of them. In the second service, injilia msalaba. The first service, injilia baraka. Komano kibeba msalaba, nahuna baraka. Hallelujah. You know, poverty can make you hate good things. Is that bless me, bless me, church again? Ay, mami, mia, nataka tunisiki yeko damu ya yesu. Utaisikia. And both of them grant access. Actually, Jesus shed his blood for the blessing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, put it there. Then we come back. There's a mistake I made is to study the word of God. Study the word of God until it becomes your weakness. So you cannot separate the cross from the blessing. The reason you went to the cross is that we may be blessed. Hallelujah. So if you hate to hear about the blessing, there's a spirit of witchcraft in your life. You know what witchcraft is? Hatred for good things. That's why a witch will demote somebody's son and kill him because they hate good things. And what you hate, you'll never have. Look at this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Look at verse 14. That, why did Jesus do that? Verse 14, everyone, look at it. Look at it, everyone. Why did Jesus hang on a tree? Answer me, one, two, three, go. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. So you cannot separate the cross, which is the tree, and the blessing. Hatu 
tuliona Yesu wengine tuliona msalaba ya damu wengine tuliona machozi wacha hii injili hii watu wanaendesha magari mazuri wacha hii injili ya comfort wengine tunataka injili ile ya old rugged cross the reason for the old rugged cross is that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us and that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith the blessing of god so the blessing of god is a gate so when you are blessed it is a gate now look at this that the blessing of abraham might come upon us the gentiles in christ jesus and that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith let's get back which one did i give you next after that ezekiel 44 verse 30 somebody shout the blessing so when he died one of the reasons they died, the blessing. Jesus became a curse. Can I just add another one? Let me go to Ezekiel. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Yes, walikuwa ovyo. Yes, walikuwa mutuwa kawaida. Yes, walikuwa nateseka. Yes, watakuwa na nyumba. Yes, walikuwa na punda. Na weu napunda. Nibwenda uguze punda ya mtu hapo njio 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 punda ni pesa. Fuda. Hata wacha punda. Fuda. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Chapter 8 verse 9. Somebody shout for you know. Look at it. Shout again for you know. Tafadhali hapa ukikuja. Hakuna mafuta utapewa. Indi umafuta. So don't reserve yourself that there is something you are waiting for. There's nothing you are waiting for. This is what brought you here. Somebody shout again for you know. Now let's read it loud. One, two, three, go. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich. Not that he was broke. Though he was rich. Yet for the sake of a law. Put your name there. Yet for the sake of a law. Shout it at the top of your voice. Yet for the sake of Olo, shout your name at the top of your voice. Yet for the sake of Olo, what happened? He became poor. That Olo, through his poverty, might become, somebody shout, shout, shout it in capital letters, might become rich. You and unite our cove. Mtu tajiri kujifanya maskini. Ili maskini awe tajiri. He was rich. His father owns the whole world. The child of a king cannot be poor. He was rich. But he looked at the poverty of the law. He said, the only way to make him poor, let me become poor, that this boy might become rich. Tell your neighbor, I'm I'm Now kipenda ujinyonge. I'm why? Not because of my education. What he did on the cross. Rich. That is the, the gospel of grace. You know the grace. So the more you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. By hanging on the tree. My poverty sent him to the tree. That's why they pierced his hands. That whatever will ever touch. When Adam sinned, God told him, the ground will produce thorns and pistols for you. And by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. When Jesus came to get some money, he ensured that sweat came from his head and touched the ground that God cast on behalf of Adam. He said, even before I go to the cross, let me reverse the curse of poverty. Let me reverse the curse of profitless hard labor. Let me reverse the curse of struggle. Let me reverse the curse of pennilessness. Let me reverse. He reversed it. Know why you can't say amen? Because you are still wondering. You mean you eko kwa Bible? Hallelujah. Now listen, Ezekiel 44 verse 30, quickly. Somebody said the blessing. Now in this blessing business, there are certain things we ought to do. We'll not just shout, Christ has done it, 
there are also certain things we do to be able to connect to the blessing that is already released. Shout hallelujah. Now look at this. The best of all fast. Somebody shout fast. Leave the fruit. Somebody shout fast. The best of all fast fruits of any kind and every sacrifice of any kind from all your sacrifices shall belong to the priest. Also, you shall give to the priest the fast of your ground meal to do what? The blessing business to cause a blessing to rest not only on you like Potiphar. The blessing of God was on Potiphar's house. You know why? He gave Joseph the first place. He gave a man that carried the blessing the first place. And when he put Joseph first, it provoked that blessing. When he gave Joseph priority, it provoked that blessing. When he treated Joseph right, when he put Joseph in his rightful position, it provoked that blessing. Be careful how you treat men that carry the blessing. Be careful. That's why you are told that honor your mother. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1. Then we come back here. Be careful how you treat people that carry the blessing of God on you for you. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter how called you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how much of a child of God you are, there are still parts of this blessing that God has entrusted with men. And the key to it is how you treat a man that carries that blessing. What did Potiphar do? He put Joseph first. He elevated Joseph above others. He gave the man a special place. He said, you cannot be like others. I have noted something is with you. I have noted your hand carries something. I have noted that God is with you. I have noted that divinity is partnering with you. I have noted you are not an ordinary man. And the way to key into this thing is that I'm going to give you the first place. If you watch how people who are around blessing carriers treat blessing carriers, no wonder they can't have it. You buy new seats. Denzilo umekalia panya zimekimbilia watoto wamekojolea. Unabebo napelekewa zazi wako nyumbani. Mzazi akizeeka hakuna kitu anakataa. Wanasema mtoto wangu asante. Oh, I'm so grateful. Umemtolea longe yenye umenyamba ndani, umekojoa ndani. Anasema asante kwa kunitolea nguo. Haki nilikuwa natembea uchi. Hata nilikuwa nikienda matanga, sikuwa na kama wa mama wengine. Haki umenisaidia. Hey, mtoto wangu hii yote because parents will help you miss it. They appreciate anything. The fact that they appreciate anything does not mean give them anything. How we treat people who carry the blessing. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Parents in the Lord are pastor, pastor's wife, men of God, spiritual fathers, prophets. I've said it every time. Parents are prophets and prophets are parents. That's why parents speak like prophets. And prophets are parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is number one. For the, the, the reason you obey your parents in the Lord is the right thing to do. Number two, honor your father and mother. Somebody shout honor. I don't like it. Shout again, honor. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with the promise. And what is the promise? Verse number four. That it may be well with you. And that you may live long on the face of the earth. That it may be well. What is prosperity? Wellness. That it may be well with you. Not that you prayed. You honored them. The reason it is not well with many people how parents are being treated. How blessing carriers are being treated. When Potiphar noted that Joseph carried something, the next thing that Potiphar did is that Potiphar removed him from being like everybody else and promoted him above every other person. Gave him the first place. And after giving Joseph the first place, the Bible says the blessing of God fell on everything that that guy had, both in the house and in the fields. Why? Because of the way he treated a man that carried the blessing. Get angry if you want to. I'm sent to teach my generation you don't handle a pastor anyhow. He's not your mate. 
I know we celebrate when we say, your father and mother who brought you to this earth. Hey! You are pastor. Is it my father? Listen, anybody that carries something divine for you, how you handle them? How you handle them? A place of priority. How many of you remember the story of Elisha and the Shunammite woman? The guy would come, sit on the table, eat and leave. But the day they built a house, that was it. How you treat the person that is carrying what you need? Shout amen. amen. You missed it already. Hey, you. Come, God wants to speak to you. Me? Okay. One day I watched someone. Give me, give me some money. One day I watched someone. I was receiving an offering here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I receive. God bless you. Thank you. Now, I was receiving these are dollars, right? So, I was receiving an offering and somebody came chewing gum. How many of you remember the 31st cross of a service? Do you still remember? Chewing gum and then I told him, come back. We are a generation that being criticized will not stop us from telling you the right thing. I told him, even if I was God, I would not receive this one. Disrespect. Dishonor. How you package what you want to give. You squeeze money and squeeze it, then threw it to whom? Because you look at it like, let pastor go and buy you. Somebody shout honor. So honor, I will come back on that. When I land on that, you'll, you'll understand. Honor your mother and father. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 2. Ephesians chapter 6. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. That it may be well. The reason is it's not well in this generation. There are things we think is honor. You take your mother to a dispensary. Mahali anarushiwa shindano kama dat. And you take your children to Agakan. Mama ni mugonjo wa mukimizeni hapo kwa soko. Your child is sick. You have an insurance scheme for your children. And you forget that one day they will not be there. One day, utaenda nyumbani, mama hata kuwa kwa kiti ile wona mpata akiwa nikalia. One day, utaenda nyumbani, ni umbu na mbuzi, na kukulisa kwa lika. One day, they will not be there. My father who sold his last cow to go and pay school fees for me is no longer there to enjoy. One day, I blessed my mother and my mother looked to heaven and began to cry and said, I know wherever you are, Look at your son that you suffered with. She desired that her husband may enjoy, but he died. But even the little that he saw before everything God has done, he blessed me. What makes a parent speak a blessing is honor. Is honor. Honor is exaggeration. Honor is expensive. Honor is not for everyone. He didn't say pity them. He said honor them. Honor your mother and your father. Which is the first commandment with a promise. How do you honor someone na kiatu wenye umesha kanyaga na ayo mafia kuku. Na mafia kumikimbia na ayo na irubi mzimi. Umeenda na ayo in every party. Alafu unatolea mze. Ana sema zanti. Hata hizi zoku zangu zilikuwa zimeisha. Sasa na chukua zile zako umesha va. Alafu unadhani umebariki mzazi. Your father sits in the bus from the village. Hana gongwa ribs. Hana kau siku mzima kwa barabara. Weo kitaka kuenda mashabani unaingia ndege. Ndege nye mekua kama matatu siku hizi. Your mother has never entered a plane. We are going to have parental blessing Sunday again. And I'm going to ask you to bring your parents to church. And I'm going to be keen on how you treat them. It will be a Sunday and a half year. 
wazazi watakuja kanisani hapa kama watakuja kwa hii hema watakuja kwa ile building mpya parents will come to church niangalie tu hivyo parents will come to church i want to see how you dress them the reason we say receive and some of you cannot receive kitanda mamako analalia nguo mamako anavaa mamako aliruka akipigania pesa imerushwa na politician akarudi akalanda kavunja mgongo and here you are with high heels shoes your mother fought over meat in a funeral mtu akamgonga mmoja mmoja akatoka mimi ndio katoka akaendelea kupigania nyama and here you are you are taking one useless girl for dinner and paying 3000 you'll die before your time that you may live long parents are agents of long life and that it may be well with you this generation does not want to hear that even if you disagreed with your father you are not allowed to dishonor him and pastor do you know he left us when we were young who told you now he left you when you were young if we do a dna test has your dna changed is your father ukipenda lia na hiyo ndio ukweli ukipenda nichukie hata sitaki unipende usinipende saa hii hauna kitu when this teaching changes your life you will love me the correct way men have gone down i shall enter i shall prosper look at your mother's house paying a rent of by the time you're paying a rent of 75000 na mama bado anatengeneza floor na mafia ngombe umepotea you are lost you need to be saved you need to be helped by the time you are wearing designer suit na babako anakohoa ordinary medicine your father cannot find say my budget is tight rent for your house your your boy girlfriend holiday 200000 mombasa ndio maana utakufa kwa maji hata waipatikana tena parents have no house 200000 holy day for a prostitute that you are calling a girlfriend she telling you i need an iphone right now i'm the only one that doesn't have an iphone simu ya mama yako imefungwa na blada looking like a suicide bomber's remote control and one silly girl is pushing you i need an iphone i need an iphone i wish i can catch the two of you i wish i can catch the two of you i wish i know you and you are here one silly young man is squandering your money squandering your salary and your mother is dying of arthritis mama amekula drugs mbaya mpaka maisha yake yanaharibika haizi pimwa vizuri this silly idiot here akigonjeka kidogo aga kan and you have not even married her yet that it may be well with you and you may live long on this earth long life is not a prayer point don't dare a man that has taken care of his parents don't dare him live alone parents a man that has gone beyond parents into spiritual fathers of the land all you are jumping with is some small salary that you have stolen from politics where shout will enter shout again will enter shout again will enter now now ezekiel 44 verse number 30 ezekiel 44 verse 30 why that the priest may cause a blessing to rest on you so you have seen honor your mother and father then when it comes to the priest offer your first fruits is one way of honor proverbs now we'll come back to ezekiel 44 verse 30 proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 you see the way you honor your mother and father when god gives you first things there are also items of honor you don't go to honor your mother and father now you go and honor your priest Hallelujah. Mimi napenda hii kazi ya pasta kwa maana si 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 kazi ya 
Okay, ni mwito, but wacha niite kazi. Kwa maana you can't fire me. <laughs> you don't pay me so you can't fire me. You can't elect me. No matter how much you hate me, it cannot uncall me. I'm still called. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So the first things are instruments of honor. I will explain. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. Look at this. The best of all first fruits again. And all sacrifices shall be the priest. Also, you shall give to the priest the first of your ground meal to cause a blessing to rest on your house. So all of them have a blessing. So you honor your mother and your father. The blessing is, it shall be well with you and you shall live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Then we come to the man Joseph. When Potiphar gave him the first place, what happened? What followed after Potiphar gave him the first place is that the Lord blessed everything that concerned Potiphar. What does that mean? To me, ladies and gentlemen, Potiphar gave his best to the men. Surrendered everything to Joseph. Now, can we just continue to read that a little bit? Uh, Genesis 39, verse 5. Let's go to verse 6. Look at this. Thus, he left all. Somebody shout all. Look at it. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Thus, he left all that he had in the hand of of Joseph and did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. What did he do? It's like the man gave everything to Joseph. Everything. We are not just talking about the first things. We are talking about everything. The man handed over everything to Joseph. And from there, God blessed him. The question that we ask therefore is this. How did Joseph get there? The blessing got him there. How did he rise above everyone? The blessing. How did he get that kind of consideration? The blessing. How did they trust him to that magnitude? The blessing. How would a man enjoy such kind of a privilege? Somebody shout the blessing. You didn't shout it well. Shout again the blessing. Shout by the blessing. I will enjoy privileges this year. Shout again by the blessing. I will enjoy privileges this year. Shout again by the blessing. I will enjoy privileges this year. Shout again by the blessing. I will enjoy some liftings this year. So the blessing of God granted him access to the top. The blessing of God granted Joseph what I call superior preference. He was chosen to lead people that were working in their own country. How did he get there? The blessing of God. The blessing of God elevated Joseph above those that he found working there before he started. The blessing of God. Elevated him above those that he found there. This year, some people will have to be careful. Because God will shoot up the obedient in a way that those that went ahead of them will question them. Can I hear an amen? Somebody shout the grace to obey. Let it rest on my life. So the blessing granted him that superior preference. The blessing of God made him be chosen. Working with people that were working in their own country. The blessing of God elevated him above those that he found there working even before he came. The blessing of God granted him a promotion that sounded like magic. If you look at the promotion that Potiphar gave Joseph, it looked like magic. Ah, uh -uh. Tell me. You mean you are a Hebrew? Yes. You mean these are Egyptians? Yes. You mean you found them there? Yes. You mean that is their country? Yes. Who is the boss? You. Ah. Uh -uh. What language do you speak? Hebrew. What language are they speaking? Different from Hebrew. Why? The blessing of God will do things in your life 
that your mother cannot explain, that your father cannot explain, that your brothers cannot explain, that your family members cannot explain, that your generation cannot explain, that the company where you are employed cannot explain. Somebody shout the blessing of God. The blessing of God. It granted him access into the heart of his boss. Proverbs chapter 22, if I'm not wrong, or chapter 20, or chapter 21. Let's begin with Proverbs 21 from verse 1. Somebody said the blessing of God. The blessing of God. The blessing of God. Look at it. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water the Lord turns the king's heart. The hearts of men are in the hands of God. So if you deal well with God, the hearts of men will be in your hands as well. If you deal well with God, if you, if you accept to walk with God in 2022, ladies and gentlemen, the hearts of men will be in your hands as well. There is no body that God cannot control their heart on your behalf. There is a place you are looking for a promotion. Wacha kupigana kama wanadamu. Wacha mungu wa kupatie miyo yao. Na mungu wa napeana miyo yao na mnagani. When you obey God, God will give you the hearts of men. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Did I hear somebody shout hallelujah? So not just the heart of poor people, the heart of a king, the heart of Potiphar. was in the hands of God. And what did God do? God mungu alikunja roho ya Potiphar akaweka kwa mikono ya Yesu. Some of you are dating men you cannot even have their hearts. You are busy with a man's pocket. But a man's heart is very far from you. The greatest thing God can give you is the heart of people. If God gives you the heart of a man of God, if you enter this heart the Philippian church entered the heart of Paul. Paul said, I have you in my heart. Hapa, na, nasema, nasema kwa unye nyekevu mwingi. Sio wote mko kwa miyo yangu. There are some of you and I look at you, I feel like sowing you as a seed to another ministry. Not all of you are in my heart. But there are people here who are in my heart. You have to fight and get into the heart. There are married men that are not in the hearts of their wives. There are married women that the farthest they can go is the pocket of their husband. The heart is not. That's why your husband is doing things that he's not sharing with you. You lost favor. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wants it to turn. Somebody shout, God will give me the hearts of men. And what gave Joseph the heart of Potiphar in that dimension? The blessing. God blessed him that Potiphar Potiphar said, take everything. The only thing I want to know is, is food ready. God lifts you to a place where anytime your boss looks at you, you want to give accounts. You say, metengeneza nyamachoma. Leten, akimaliza nyamachoma, yondi your accounts. Amenda. You say, the rest, run it. Run it. What manner of a promotion is that? When a man, your husband, takes all ATMs and pins and puts in your hands. You say, mime ni achie ni kakaunt kadogo tu ya mafuta ya gari. Na kama naeza kula nyama mbarabarani imetosha. The rest in your hands. There are women here, the day the husband puts everything in her hands, that man will die of heart attack. You can't be trusted. You can't be trusted. The blessing of God made the heart of Potiphar open and told Joseph everything. You know who Potiphar was? My friend. He said everything. Everything. I don't want to know. There's a level where you are told don't give account. So long as workers are paid, bills are paid, everything is done, whether you have stolen 10 million, that is up to you. We don't want to know anything. The rest, I knew a man that was an accountant to a rich man that is illiterate. And he was stealing big time. And every time the rich man would say, when I see you, I know things are good. It's okay. Continue. When I just seeing you, just seeing you. This year is the year God will bless you to a point that 
your boss by just looking at you, he say, one year holiday in America. Wewe na jamii yako na familia yako, lipwa. Milioni sita ni kidogo sana. Nime hongeza himi kumilioni na nenda upumzike kidogo. When I just look at you, go and rest. It's called the favor of God, the anointing of God, the blessing of God. Wengine, when the boss looks at you, he remembers mugu ya gari nilipote kwa kampuni. Kuja, 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 kuja. kuja. Unasema hiyo mugu hau kiona? Unaza kosaji kuyona. Na wewe, we, kuja, 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 kuja. I pray that the blessing of God. Hey, somebody said, hey! The blessing of God. Open the heart of Potiphar to Joseph. And we learn, ladies and gentlemen, that this kind of blessing is connected to our obedience. Hmm. If therefore honoring God with the first things gets us to dimensions like this, then from what I've said, we can define what fast foods are. I've used so many words to say one thing. I wanted you to see what it means to be blessed. What the blessing can be. So that whatever is connected to you being blessed has this kind of power. This can easily help us define what first things are. Somebody shout, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, this therefore means that fast fruit is a weapon given to you that you may make the top in life your place. It is a weapon given to you by God. The first things in your life is a weapon given to you by God so that you can come to the top of life. Proverbs 3.9. Let's visit it again. So that you can come to the top in life. There's an obedience you execute and you come to the top in life. Your obedience has never been to enrich God. Your obedience is to bring you to the top in life. Your obedience has never been to enrich any pastor. Your obedience is to bring you to the top in life. Look at it. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all your increase. Then what follows? Look at verse 10. So your barns will be filled with plenty. And your vat. Somebody shout over. Somebody shout over. Shout honor. Then shout over. Shout again honor. Then shout over. Now shout this. Shout dishonor. Shout under. Shout dishonor. Shout under. So we can compose a song. Who knows how to rap? <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a way you have to stand when you want to rap. Is it? <laughs> so somebody shout honor above. Shout dishonor. Shout under. Simple. So when you honor, over is the topmost. That's why I live a life of honor. We'll never dishonor any man of God. Why? Because I'm, I, I know how bad the bottom is. So I'll never dishonor any man of God. I'll never dishonor my parents. Anybody that has been a parent to me in the gospel will never know my dishonor. Why? Because when you honor the top, over, so your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So over is the result of honor. When Potiphar honored Joseph with the first place in his house, what happened? God blessed him. The blessing follows obedience. Somebody shout, I take that. So therefore, the first things in your life or your first fruit is a weapon given to you that you may make the top your place in life. First fruits are the way to push to the top. Why do I obey God? With my first fruit. I want to be at the top in life. No man honors God with the first and fails to access the top. When you make God first, the top is your place. When you make God first, I've taught you this about tithe. Don't pay tithe after paying bills. Don't pay tithe after doing other stuff. When you make God first, the top. Jesus said, 
Seek ye. I can't hear you. Seek ye. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. So, you make God first, additions come. You make God last, subtractions come. It is the way to push to the top. No man honors God with the first and fails to access the top. So stop criticizing those that are at the top. Find out their hearts with the first things. You don't know a man until you know a man's heart. Copy a man's suit. You don't know him yet. Copy a man's house. You don't know him yet. Copy a man's car. You don't know him yet. But when you get a man's heart, you have found him. So stop criticizing people because of how God has blessed them. You need to find out their heart. You need to find out the price they are paid. You need to find out how much sacrifice they have sacrificed in their own life. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? amen. Therefore, how you handle your fast is how, how high you will go in life. The way you treat fast things is how high you will go in life. What does I say about the fast things? Or fast fruits. I say they are those fast things at the beginning of the year. Fast things in a fast place for the first time. And I explain. I say it's the first increase in your life. From a salary of a million to a salary of 1.5 million. You've never earned 1.5 million before. The first time you earn 1.5, the 500 is an opportunity for you to honor God. You're earning it for the first time. The entire income is a way for you to honor God. You're telling God you are first in my life. Nothing compares to you. Not even my boss. Not even my pastor. I honor you above everything else. And you do that by offering God your first fruits. Somebody shout, I hear. Shout again, I hear. So those are the things we call first fruits. Now listen to this. So it is a way you handle the first things that determines how high you go in life. We look at the life of Joseph and we conclude that honoring God with your first fruits anoints your life with unusual preference. It births an anointing that swallows up your background issues. I repeat again. Honoring God with your first fruit anoints your life with unusual preference. It births an anointing that swallows up background issues. If we look at what the blessing did to Joseph, then we can conclude if the blessing rests on us on the platforms of obeying God with the first things, then the way to deal with tribal battles in your place of work, the year is beginning. Honor God with the first things. They promoted Joseph without looking at where he was coming from. The blessing did that. You want to walk in the same blessing. Unusual preference comes on your life when you honor God with the first things. It births an anointing that will swallow up your background issues. You rise above tribal battles by your first fruits. You destroy politics in your place of work by your obedience to God. The tribal devils that want to come after you, you swallow them. You blind them. You confuse them by your obedience to God. How? When you are fast, salary has already gone to God. So who is fighting your battles? Your boss or your God? You are God. Those are the things that happen when we obey God with tithe. You hand over your battles to God. But you swallow tithe, you swallowed everything. So God, <laughs> God cannot fight for you. The devil cannot fight for you. Because even the devil, you are not obeying him very well. Satan is disciplined. You can't serve the devil without discipline. And God is disciplined. Somebody shout, I hear. You think God is served by just tutoring your mother? <laughs> the whole time, you brought your mother. <laughs> Somebody shout, my obedience is taking me to the top. Shout again, my obedience is taking me to the top. Number three then, fast fruits are overtaking sacrifices. It is the way you travel faster than others.
how did Joseph arrive faster than other people? By the blessing. How then do we connect to that blessing? By honoring God with the first things. So ladies and gentlemen, it is the way, it is an overtaking sacrifice. I always say this, when you see a man traveling very fast, there is something he knows. When you begin work and in one year you have built a seven bedroom home, the villagers say this is too fast. Right? And then they say there must be something. Tulianda kujenga kwa coronavirus. And in one year, we are where we are. And in a month or two, we'll be worshipping in that facility. Amen. What have you heard being said? There is something. Makanisa zimefungwa. Hakuna sadaka. Yes, because to travel faster than usual, there must be something. Ahab was on a horse. Elijah was on foot. But Elijah outran him. Why? The hand of God came on Elijah. The hand of God cannot be on you in a company and you complain with others. The hand of God backs speed. There is growth that is unusual. There is growth that is wild. You know Pastor Crispin, my son, in Bungoma they say, kuna kitu alienda na ulo alimpatia. Because Jamali Teseka kwa ministry. How many of you heard him when he was saying he wanted to commit suicide? He said it is enough. Ministry has punished my life. He connected to me. And I think one year, a ministry that was struggling, they bought land. They built. Built the offices. Things changed. Cars become normal. And other pastors said, we told you. Yes. We told you. We told you. We told you. You will travel faster than you are. You will travel faster than you have ever traveled. Hallelujah. You will build a house in six months and you are done. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? No more delays in your life because pastor, fast fruits is an overtaking sacrifice. For over ten years, I've stayed by that principle. And every year, I can't repeat the battles of last year. Every year, shoo, every year, shoo, every year, shoo, I speak over your life. Every year, you are going to the top. Every year, you'll become better. Every year, you'll become better. How? Obey God. Honor God with the fast fruits. Honor God with it. Joseph came and found people there and within no time. Shh, why? The blessing. What does the blessing do? The blessing is an overtaking force. When the blessing is on your life, you'll be the last born and everyone will be calling you Papa, Papa, Daddy, 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 your elder brothers, Daddy, Daddy, the whole village, Daddy, the chief, Daddy, Daddy, Mama, Hi, Mom, Hi, Hi, everyone, why? Because the blessed child is the real child. Or your parents have not taught you that. How many of you have known that parents are very biased? Mukono mtupu haurabwi na alikuza. Ndi hata kuwania uruma lakini mukono mtupu. The way parents agree with the child that has. Kupanga kinyume ya wale wenye hawana. Wenye hana kia muka na kuja kute parents alikuwa na ongena uli akona hai. Nasema na kuja, na kuja, na kuja. Na uyo pia ni mtoto wake. Kana kuja atisa hii ndiyo kama ya muka saa hii. Utaona vile katameza chai. Nga kagie tu. Mtoto wangu ni meteseka kwa hii village. Utamona tu vile na meza chai. This is what I live with every day. But I thank God for you. Poteza pesa ujue. Somebody shout, Ay! Sema pesa wewe, pesa wewe. Lazima unieshimu mwaka huu. Money baths respect naturally. If your own mother will reject you because you don't have money, whose, whose, whose daughter do you think will accept you like that? It is about Rav. It's about Rav. 
Rife is not about money. Rife is about rough. All these girls looking for money all the time. Rife is about rough. Go to your mother and tell your mother, I love you, my mother. I love you. Akupenda ivo. Kuno mtupu haurabwi. Any jobless person here, that joblessness has caused you shame in your family. Get back your dignity today. Receive an overtaking anointing and grace. Receive an overtaking anointing and grace. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Ladies and gentlemen, compete nobody. Just better your obedience. Attack no one. Just suffocate your greed. By honoring God with your first fruit. You can start late and still be the latest. Why? When the blessing of God is upon your life, Joseph came later than everyone else. Within no time, he was the latest thing happening in Egypt. Shout, I receive. Number four. When you honor God with your first fruits, it is the way to access things that look too good to be true. Things that look too good to be true. Things that look too good to be true. Promotions that look like magic. Promotions that sound like magic. But don't forget. How many of you have realized that most believers, most Christians, most of our people don't believe in things that are too good? I posted one of us the testimony Someone gave him a business, right? And uh, a lady who is a pastor went and commented, was answering someone here who said, the kind of testimonies I hear at King's Gathering Church, I only hear them with Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, things that are too good to be true. How many of you have read that? And I went there and I answered her, when you're dealing with God, how can someone put the whole of this world together in six days without a loan? Too good to be true. There is something she was trying to raise that either it was cooked or if it was not cooked, there is something the guy is using. One of my sons, I don't know if he has arrived, but one of my sons here, he Walk, you know, he has been up and down and all that. I don't know what God is doing this year. So he left somewhere, he came back, he went somewhere, and somebody came to see him after, after, after he did something. And the person told him, on Monday, I want to take you somewhere. So the person took him somewhere on Monday. It was a flat, an apartment that someone had bought a two-bedroomed apartment that was being sold and somebody bought. And he said, I wanted you to see because I want to give you this apartment. So the remaining thing is to put together the documents so that it can be in your name. He said, sir, help me believe that I'm dreaming. I said, but you are the one who wrote the testimony. So how can I help you believe that you are dreaming? Things that look unusual. I did a meeting somewhere. People... They began to count money at 12 noon. They counted money until 8 p.m. And someone leaned over to one deacon and said, are you sure we are safe? Because this money is like when we are counting it, are you sure we are safe? You have followed me. We have entered some houses that if you look at that house, the owner looks like he's never handled 10,000. Then he pulls out his gift that he wants to give me. And all you can say, either this man brought this money here to confuse me. Too good to be true. That's what I carry. We we bilo naka ivi utaishi mtaiga. No na me because you don't believe. Pastor si unge seme kongoro ya pa chini. Yo inaka. Mungu haonge kusu kitu ni inaka. Too good to be true. Supposing Joseph was given a chance to give a testimony. I pray, 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 praise the Lord. People say amen. I came to this country as a houseboy. Yes, sir. I was bought from the market. Yes, sir. I never went to school. Hi. You know, Potiphar was a senior officer in government. And he had people working for him and his businesses. Then Joseph said, then I landed 
then nikaingia jikoni mara nikaoshaosha vyombo mara potifa akaona mkono wa bwana juu yangu akasema unaona sasa mkono wa bwana mtu anataonaje juu yangu potifa akaniweka kiongozi vile saa hii mko hapa wapendwa utajiri yote ya chief of general staff is in my hands the church went quiet he said he, he, too good to be true a man will propose to you and you are three children it will look too good to be true friday night i'm going to release the blessing of marriage together with my wife utaolewa na kijana yenyewe hata wewe ukimwangalia na msuspect unasema atakana mimi hata ananiacha atakana mimi hata ananiacha atakana mimi hata ananiacha and the more you think atakuacha the more anaendelea kuishi na wewe the more you think atakuacha the more anakupenda zaidi utapendwa mpaka udhani udhanie ni mchezo ni dream ni ndoto ha, si kweli ni dream some of you are going to count money in the year 2022 utadhani ni ndoto unaota kumbe ni pesa unahesabu can somebody shout hallelujah in this place it is too good to be true you honor god with this thing called fast fruits one day someone called me somewhere and i'll be reserved with the testimony i've given this testimony several times he dropped the bag in my boot <laughs> instead of driving coming back to nairobi i began to drive headed to alimuru the guy who would say man of god are you seeing somebody i said no we are going home he said no we are home i said ah uh-uh. Let's turn and go back home. For me to drive going the wrong direction, it was too good to be true. Somebody shout, "Aish!" It was too good to be. When you are dealing with God, wachana na vitu ambazo zinakaa ukweli. When God moves na kanga uongo. Ati praise the Lord wapendwa. Mshahara wangu ilikuwa anga 3000 baada ya professional breakthrough Sunday. Akimungu ametenda, umeniongezea 1011. Na kanisa inalia. It is not too good to be true. 1011 is not too good to be true. It's not too good to be true. It's a miracle but it looks like you are helping God. Stop forcing tears that are not coming naturally. We will not cry. Ushuda yenyewe unalazimisha watu walie. We will not cry. It is too natural. My name is Maurice Solo. I'm talking about things that are too good to be real. Vile ulisikia huyo mama akisema if the deal is too good. Chunga. <clears throat> When God lands on your life, a generation must say mm-mm, mm-mm. You know when I opened the floor, ndio sasa watu waliniandikia. When I opened the floor with the Rigo's testimony ndio sasa wenye walikuwa wananishuku hata kwa hii ministry waliniambia ukweli wakasema papa yenyewe ni kweli hata mimi nilikuwa nashuku hata mimi nilikuwa nashuku kuna watu wamekaa hapa na wanashuku financial testimony wakati naomba ya kwamba bwana ataingiza pesa kwa vibeti za watu anashikanga kibeti yake anasema mimi sidanganywi sipangwi ngwi mimi sipangwi ngwi sipangwi ngwi macho yangu nitafungua sipangwi ngwi the blessing of god ni kupangwa na mbingu Because mbingu ikikupanga hautaelewa, hautaelezea. The testimony of Joseph was too good to be true. Why? The blessing. Because God blessed him. Utajiri kama hiyo within no time. Ndio boss wa kila kitu. How many of you saw the the girl that went to in a pass out parade? His dad is a corporal. Now she's two ranks ahead of his biological father. And the dad was happy. He said that's it. I don't mind saluting my own daughter. Hata mimi ningependa niishi nione vitu kama hizo. Because a real parent prays for the children to be greater than him. Nataka mjenge manyumba ambazo nikiangalia narudi maombi kwa kuomba Mungu baba nikumbuke. Nataka muendeshe magari. Pastor, I want you to drive a car that when I look at, I go back to prayer. Then I know the ministry I know grace is at work. Si ati lazima iwe law yangu kidogo, iwe law yangu kidogo. I want God to bless you in a way that when I look at you I learn faith. I don't want you to have a goal of one small car driving and that that is you. hey when I reach papa which level? That's the heart of a father. I was telling the pastors here 
mkitaka nitafute Mungu nataka mmoja wenu arudi na ukirudi Royal Banquet in Sunday utakuwa na congregation kama hii 10 times utarudi maombi that's the heart of a father how many of you know there are fathers you cannot become better than them it will be a problem that muse blessed me that i don't mind telling my daughter saluting my daughter because she's now two ranks ahead of me who doesn't want to see their children become like them and become better than them you're supposed to be better than your father sio kungangana na nyumba ya sijui three rooms baba yako alijenga kaacha nusu sasa hapo ndio wewe umesquat ati una repair una repair nini hapa but the instrument of the blessing things that are too good to be true begins in your life in this service today as you honor god things that are too good to be true begin in your life from this morning can somebody shout hallelujah shout again too good to be true shout again too good to be true is my portion in the name of jesus it will be too good to be true it is the way the things of god look like promotions that look like magic in closing look at second chronicles chapter 9 in verse number 20 second chronicles 920 look at it all king solomon's drinking vessels were gold ukombe gold ujiko gold fork gold uliho gold Somebody say gold. King Solomon alikuwa malaika. All King Solomon's drinking vessels. Mtu anakunywa pombe kwa gold. Na wewe unakunywa chai kwa plastic. Nimehusa chai. Your wife say ah ah honey no 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 no. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were were gold. All the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver, for silver was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. Too good to be true. Nipatie good news translation. Somebody shout, "Hey!" All of King Solomon's drinking cups were made of gold, ukombe gold. And all the utensils in the hall of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Silver was considered was not considered valuable. Silver was nothing. Somebody shout too good to be true. Look at Job chapter 22 verse number 24. Job 22 verse 24. Give me the New King James. Job 22 verse 24. Go to verse 23 then we combine 23 and 24. If you return to the Almighty, somebody shout return to God. If you return to the almighty you will be built up God will not tear you down God will build you up you will be built up you will remove iniquity from your tents look at verse 24 then you will lay your gold in the dust and the gold of offer among the stones of the brooks good news translation of verse 22 and verse number 23 of verse 23 and verse 22 yes you must humbly return to God and put an end to all the evil that is done in your house 24 throw away your gold dump your finest gold in the dry stream bed you will have so much of it it will look like dust somebody say too good to be true why because you have returned to god and you have been built up when you return when you are dealing with god when you come back to god when you decide that this year you want to deal with god Simon utahesabu pesa. Utahesabu pesa mpaka zingine unaambia mka hapo unarusha tu bundle kwa kitano namwambia I don't have time. Honey count it you'll tell me how much is it. Can I hear an amen? Pastor Victor, you need to count money until mtoto wako anakimbia na bundle ya 1 million. Ameenda nayo nje. What neighbors wanasema hey hey ndio namfuata anasema baby bring it bring it bring it bring it back home. Some of you pesa yako ni kidogo hivi. Atuwezi funga na blada pesa yenye hizi fungwa na blada ndio unakuanga nayo kidogo hivi unless usibadilishe 50 50 50 uke okay, hesabu okay, na leak mdomo
Lazima ugeuke when you see your wife coming. <laughs> Somebody shout may God punish poverty in the name of Jesus. Shout again. Hey! Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 11. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6. <laughs> hey! Kabia to nini? Pick it from verse 10. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. One of our daughters from the choir here has not said, my papa, I want to give a testimony. If you praise the Lord, we say amen. Praise the Lord, we say amen. Media ni weke ni picha. Tunaona nyumba yenye natoka hapa mpaka kwa building mahali tunajenga. Unasema the God of Papa has all the women in the church will say I told you this girl is a devil worship. I told you this girl is a devil worship. And you did not build it because you are dealing with God. Now look at verse number 11. Houses full of all good things which you did not fill. Hewn out walls which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, Mungu ujaza watu tumbo. Utakula. Wengine hapa unakata hauna mwili. Sio mwili hauna ni umasikini mekulemea. Hallelujah. Unasema hata mimi hata nisipoenda gym niko sawa. Uende gym kujimaliza huko. Una nini ya kuwecha kwa gym? Hata mimi hata nisipoenda gym. Mimi na mnaoniona na hivi. Haki mimi. Oh, mungu wa kukubariki hivo. Somebody shout. Hey! Houses full of all good things which you did not fill. Hewn out wells which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. Why? You are dealing with God. Too good to be true. How do you have cities that you did not build? Ulimwengu itakuambia na ufaje kazi. You only laziness. God does not give you just what you worked for. When you walk with God, get ready for things you didn't work for. 2022, get ready for a dream car you did not buy. You did not import. Hallelujah. I know a man of God that was driving an old car. And the neighbors were selling cars. And they had just imported the latest model of a Mercedes. And the man was reversing. And by mistake, his car lost a brick. And scratched a brand new Benz that was on sale. And he humbled himself. He said, good morning everyone. I'm pastor. I said, pastor, we know you. I'm sorry I was reversing and I scratched the car. Okay, pastor, no problem. Let's go and see. They all came out. And the husband looked at the wife. The wife looked at the husband. The husband looked at the wife. The wife looked at the husband. And they smiled. And they said, pastor, actually, we imported the car for you. Good day. Somebody shout, too good to be true. Shout again, too good to be true. Shout again, too good to be true. Now, believers who don't have faith in God, when they hear that, ilipangwa. Ilipangwa, yo ilipangwa. Uyo ni pastor uloa ilipanga yo. Sisi ya tupangu ingui. Hallelujah. Mungu atakupangwangwa. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at Psalm 84 verse 11 in finishing. <laughs> Psalm 84 verse number 11. For the Lord is God... For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Somebody shout grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. Raise your hands and say, every good thing. There is none that God cannot give me. So no good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, that simply means no good thing. The husband of your desire, six packs, tall, dark, handsome with brains. He cannot deny you. Shati wengine, wengine ni six packs diyo lakini hapa, zero. How many of you, my, my daughters here, you want to marry a six pack man? Hallelujah, glory to God. That's your dream prayer. I don't want to look like I'm worldly. But that's the reality, hallelujah. Serve God. Every good thing God can give you. If you don't serve God, God will give you quarter pack. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hanaka mugonjo all the time. 
Ukitembea na watu watu hani ebu ngojeni baba yenu anakuja. Hadi <laughs> Somebody shout hey! So there is nothing good that God cannot give you. Begin from Range Rover 2022 model. Pastor, I can dedicate that as your car. No good thing. Anything called good. Too good to be true. A good wife. Not a wicked one. Leo na ule alinyofoa mzee hata picha yenyewe aliweka kwa walimweka nayo kwa Facebook vile anaangalia hivi mtu akasema the look alone scared the judge hallelujah <laughs> a good wife too good to be true second last <laughs> look at Luke chapter 5 and verse 8 Peter <laughs> Yesu alikuja mchana aka multiply samaki Petero akaangalia samaki zenye zimekuja mchana the nets were sinking Peter looked at it and looked at Jesus and he said now i know i've been following a wrong man he looked at the fish the abundance and he looked at Jesus now let's go to verse 7 and verse 8 call the brasada gamagadi libadaga and when they had done this they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking so they signaled their partners in other boats to come and help them and they came and filled both of the boats so they began to sink look at verse 8 when simon peter saw it he fell down at jesus knees saying depart from me for i am a sinful man o god abundance that made peter, peter, peter only saw his sin peter believed that for me to see this kind of wealth i have seen Depart away from me. Too good to be true. Samaki ya mchana ilishida samaki ya usiku. And you know deep sea fishing is done in the night. Jesus was doing this during daytime. God will bless you in January you to launch project mpaka your own manager will be looking at you and say how how now how from all logistics how because it is too good to be true. Look at 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse number 10. I close my bible i leave this place by telling you the advantages of obeying god we went to dedicate a house with mama that miracle house i'll put the pictures Three months they had that house we dedicated it and i told them madam jaona now that i've come to dedicate this one mtaitwa waganga mtanunua property you'll buy lands you'll buy lands you'll buy things because god is too good to be true mungu si mungu wa kuombea linton is dream miaka tatu mlikuwa manga kwa linton naendanga hapo mnaizunguka baada ya prayer we continue the prayers of the man of god hallelujah he baba baba he baba baba mnapaka mafuta mzee anapaka mafuta mama what is that nyumba ilikuwa ma linton so mnaisukuma na maombi god is too good to be true Somebody shout again too good to be true. Shout again too good to be true as mama comes to receive her offerings. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold. That is the queen of Sheba. Spices in great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba the man he is giving to his Solomon. But it is recorded that kind of abundance has never been seen again pesa pastor kuna pesa yenye wazee wanakuja wanasema hii haijawahi ionekana my spiritual father preached in nyeri almost 15 years ago and it is said until today the giving that was done in nyeri town 15 years ago men of god from all walks of life have preached there Harambees have been done politicians have been called but it has never been seen that kind of money 15 years later nobody has fasted yet to break the record you are dealing with god not your uncle god is not from your village that he will go to chief and say hey, chief i wanted to bless this young man how much he said mpatie nyumba ya mabati ya room 2 Bwangezie shamba kidogo hapo Mungu rudi. God is not from your village. 
Mungu atakubariki utagundua wewe unakuwa na mapua very smart Poverty can give you one nose that looks like the back of a donkey <laughs> Kwa sababu ya kuchukia baraka za watu na kuinua inua mapua so poverty can make your nose bigger than your head but i pray <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah Stand up on your feet and walk to seven people and tell them do good to be true Too good to be true Too good to be true Everyone that has watched online I want you to connect to this word We are almost finishing up building the house of God Get two bags of cement and connect to the house of God this morning Let this anointing be released to you Can I hear an amen I don't like your amen Can I hear an amen now this is not your type, this is not your offering. You are saying the grace to experience things that are too good to be true. Online, all over the place, on television, get two bags of cement and let's connect to grace. And after you do that, send me a message and say, man of God, I have done that. The grace to walk in things that are too good to be true. I become part of it in the name of Jesus. Let the blessing of God grant me access. Do that as you obey God and as you honor God in the name that is above every name. In the name that is above every name. In the name above every name. In the name above every name. I wish you'd sing, You are great, yes, you are. You are great, yes, you are. Some wish it could have been written, You are small, yes, you are. Little girl. You provide biscuits here and there and a pen to write. <laughs> you reign in littleness. Our small God. Everything written about you is small. But that is not what the song says. This is what the song says, Brother Nick. You are great, yes, you are. Mm. Holy one. Mm -mm. Walked upon the sea. You raise the dead, reign in the majesty, you reign in majesty, holy one, everything return, everything return about you is great, you are great, yes you are, you are great, yes you are. you to package your offering you need an envelope just lift up your hand and our ashes will serve you in a powerful way you are online the numbers are on your screen the m -person number the account details you want to be a blessing to this grace may you do so through the numbers and the lord surely bless you you're in the house you need an envelope kindly lift up your hand you have packaged your offering, lift it above your head and let me speak a blessing over it. Everlasting Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessings that have been released upon our lives. You were with Joseph. You blessed him. He prospered. This morning we claim the blessings upon our lives. Every work of our hands are blessed. The children are blessed. Marriages are blessed. And as we key in through this giving, let your word be established. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and somebody said, Amen. For those in the house, we will lay it on the altar. We will be faster. The baskets are here and the other one is here. For those watching online, God bless you. The second service begins at exactly 11. We look forward to fellowshipping with you. Until then, God bless you. See you in Kwaheri.